The age-old debate among tech nerds has always been this, which is better, Mac or PC? You got the creative crowd who kind of voted with their money for the Apple side of things, and then you got the more tinkering kind of tech enthusiast crowd that ended up going with PC because of the ability to upgrade. It's a debate that's gone on for years, and man, I can tell you this, people are insanely passionate about it. And here's the thing, both sides are at fault for thinking that the other side is some half-wit dummy who doesn't know how to tie their own shoes. But here's what's interesting, the iPad has never really entered into this conversation, and that's because for the most part, the iPad has never really been a full standalone device. Yeah, you had the hardcore iPad folks that like, <laughs> they figured out every single weird workaround that you could possibly have, and there are a ton of workarounds you had to do as a person who used your iPad only. But for regular people, the iPad just couldn't keep up. I mean, especially if you have a professional workflow, there was just no way that iPad OS could keep up with everything you needed to do. Well, on June 15th, everything changed. And if you've been living under a rock, let me explain, but make sure you stick around because I do think I have like the best possible setup if you're in this Mac PC iPad debate. So let me just do a really quick overview of what iPad OS 26 fixed. These are like the biggest problems that it fixed. The first thing they fixed was file management. I mean, it like <laughs> iPad OS has been notoriously bad for file management. It was clunky. I mean, you couldn't move files from one place to another. You couldn't put files on a desktop. It was just so clunky. And when you have a creative workflow, there's just absolutely no way to use that mess of iPad OS and try to kind of make sure you get all your work done. It was just so hard because you can't pull files in and push them out. It, it was crazy. So what did they fix? Well, one of the things was you put files in the dock, which is huge, 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 because if you're trying to pull files from one place, you just kind of like, drag and drop it into the dock, and then you pull it from that dock into whatever you're working on. That's something that the iPad has never been able to do, and it is incredibly helpful. Like for me, I'm constantly using a music folder to pull music in and put them into my videos, and with the old iPad OS, it was really difficult to actually pull them in. I'd have to like upload them from different weird places. It was a mess, and so I always edited videos on my MacBook. Now I can actually edit videos on my iPad. Now the other really cool thing they did is if you have a folder in the dock, when you put it there and you click on it, the file fan out. Now, if you've been a fan of Mac OS, that's something it's been able to do for a long time, which makes it so easy to just click that file and drag it in. I mean, seriously, one of the main things that's kept me from using the iPad as my main system is this clunky file structure. So with iPad OS 26, it's so helpful that that's now fixed. Now, the other massive feature that they introduced was the ability to have multiple windows open. And with those windows, you can scale them however you want, place them wherever you want. This is huge. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that Apple would do this. I mean, their fear should be, and it, it probably has been what's taken so long, is that they were going to cannibalize an entire part of their company. And so you don't want the iPad cannibalizing your MacBook sales or vice versa, which is the main reason why we haven't yet seen a touchscreen MacBook. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because I'm sure by this point, you've probably seen everything it can do. But this really does open up a world of possibilities for different kinds of workflows. Having an iPad with an M-series chip being locked down just you know arbitrarily because Apple wanted to, that is so frustrating. And we know that with these M-series chips in an iPad, it could theoretically run a full version of Mac OS. And so it is really just amazing that they're starting to move in that direction. Now, one thing that's really important that we have to talk about is the fact that this kind of makes the case now for those who buy the massive iPad. You see, iPads have always been things that you could hold in your hand. I remember being a kid and one of my friends, they had an iPad and, and it was the first one that came out and he's holding, he's like, man, it's like you're holding the internet in your hands. And that was absolutely insane. I mean, that was a total shift in technology at that point. But I don't know if you ever held a 13 inch device in your hands. Uh, that's really, really big. And so you're never really gonna hold a 13 inch iPad. But as we've seen with the Magic Keyboard, iPads are no longer just things you hold in your hand. They're going to be things you're gonna use like a regular computer so that you can use a keyboard to type on it. And so with this new iPad OS, it opens up the possibility to use the iPad as an actual viable computer, which is crazy because that's something we've never been able to say so far. And so historically, I've always said people should buy the 11 inch version. It's just more versatile, all that. However, now with this new ability with iPad OS 26, you can actually buy the bigger iPad by one device and it actually makes sense. So what does this have to do with the PC versus Mac debate? 
let's talk about it. This iPad can finally be a real computer for people. And that's like most people in most of their workflows. I understand there's going to be some people who do coding and that kind of stuff. They're going to need Mac OS, but like if you're a business person, you can now use an iPad as your main machine. And so like for me, I use Ulysses to write all my videos out, write all my sermons. I use Logos Bible app to study and I can now put them side by side. I can connect an external monitor, put one of them up there with different size screens. It is amazing for workflows. So now you can have your iPad when you go out and about and then at home, you can have a super powerful desktop. So instead of having a laptop and a PC at home and an iPad, if you wanted to draw, you can kind of consolidate that down now just to have an iPad and your PC. So the big question now is which desktop do you actually want to get? Listen, I'm a tinkerer at heart. I love Mac OS. I love the simplicity. I love that it just works, but I love tinkering. And so I always love having a PC at home. I mean, it's hard to argue that the PC is not a better value long term. You can upgrade you know, storage, you can upgrade RAM, you can do CPU, GPU, all of it. You can upgrade as you go, buying just small bits and parts here and there. Like just recently, I bought new RAM for my PC. If I wanted to do that with a Mac, it would be absolutely impossible. I also wanted four more terabytes of storage for video editing and all that kind of stuff. Do you know how much that would cost on a Mac? That's about a thousand dollar upgrade for a PC. It's like 200 bucks, no big deal. And now I have four terabytes worth of extra storage. So that PC has, I think, 16 terabytes of storage. That would be wild to do in a Mac. And then on top of that, think about gaming. If you are a gamer, there is a million, million, million reasons why you should never choose a Mac computer. But PCs are awesome for gaming. Now, I do know Mac gaming has come a really long way. I've really been loving Byte Review, Tom, uh, his videos on Mac gaming. It is awesome. However, there is just no world where you can compare a Mac to a PC when it comes to gaming. Now, if you're not a gamer and you don't want to upgrade your PC over time by yourself, then absolutely the Mac mini is the way to go. I mean, five 99 for a Mac mini is an absolute crazy, crazy price for that thing. And it performs so well for what it is. And so I, I mean, if you're not going to game and you're not going to be a person that's going to tinker around a little bit, even tinkering with the software, because when you're using windows, you do have to tinker a little bit more. If you're not going to be that person, then man, that Mac mini absolutely rips. And so here's the option that's never been on the table before. You have a baller PC at home, one that's got, you know, tons of storage and all that for your little you know, you want to sail the high seas and you can do that if you want with a PC and you have all the storage in the world, you can upgrade things. And then when you're on the go, you get your iPad, which is now a completely capable device. And then once you, you know, maybe you have a video project or something like that, and you really need to get some real powerful work done, just go back home and work on your PC. Now, if you've been worried that Windows won't hold up to what you need to do, I mean, Windows has gotten more and more and more stable over time. I've probably only gotten the blue screen of death, I think twice in the past, like four years. And so I think it's super stable. And then if you're, you know, a creative person, because most creative people think, you know, creativity and Mac is synonymous. However, Lightroom runs perfect on PC. DaVinci Resolve runs perfect on PC. Photoshop runs perfect. I mean, there's like all the PC Mac kind of crossover apps have both developed in incredible ways. And so this is such a cool time to be alive where the iPad is actually closer to Mac OS than it's ever been before. And I'm so excited to see it continue over time. So let me know in the comments below, what's your ideal setup? Is it a Mac and an iPad? Is it a PC iPad? Maybe it's just a MacBook or just an iPad. Now listen, we're not gonna talk about you sick freaks that use window laptops. They are horrible. I'm just kidding. But hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit a like on the video. Please sub to the channel. We're on our way to 20,000. And if you like this video and you're looking for an iPad, I think you're gonna love this video right here telling you which size iPad to go with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.